Wait. I don't know, dude. This is the full uncut file. Oh, what the hell do you have that for? I don't know. I, that's what's in the fucking. Oh, hold on, hold on. I drew. <laughs> I drew the wrong place. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode Beta 80 for Friday the 13th of May 2016. I'm Amos and uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends talk about anything the hell they want because this is just whatever this week. That guy putting the show together, that's Kent and holy crap I am out of my element. What am I doing? What do I do with my hands? I don't know what to do with my hands right now, Kent. What's going on? Oh my god, it's fucking Friday the 13th. Oh, that just seems fitting. Because we just went back to Alpha. I think. <laughs> Holy crap, man. So, as you alluded to, I am running shit this week. and um, Right into the ground. <laughs> yeah. uh, hopefully not all the way to the ground. Uh, soft landing at worst, right? Yeah, let's, let's go for soft landing. Uh, or hard right. landing at a, at a worst. Let's not crash. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, yeah, man, it's Friday the 13th. It's mm. rich three time. Mm. Let's do it. That means it's a it's Friday night just past everybody going to bed. That's what the, that's usually what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the hardcore. You, you, you the, love you. <laughs> yeah, you're either too tired or too drunk to watch this show. That's what we survive on. So, <laughs> hey man, this week uh, this week I just I, I want to say two things. One, um, we had an exercise, and during the exercise with my busted knee that I was supposed to be letting rest. I ended up walking 78,822 steps, according to my pedometer, which comes out, comes out to 39.2 miles over four days. Holy crap, dude. Um, and uh, more importantly, I bit my lip on Sunday, and that motherfucker has not healed, and it hurts really bad, and it's right there where I'm always, like, biting stuff, so I've bit it, like, five or six more times, like... Fuck this lip. Right. So you got herpes. <laughs> yeah, I got fucking, I got exercise herpes. I got. This <laughs> is a thing. <laughs> Sanitize your gas mask. That's what happened. <laughs> I got, uh, I got, I got MRE herpes from fucking eating MREs and, and the package slipping against my lip or something. I don't know, but it hurts and it's been killing me for like five, <gasps> five days now. Oh my God. Um, and I am now semi homeless. I am actually in my hotel on base. Oh um, look! Oh, different scenery. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of nice. The internet sucks, you know, because I'm sharing it with all 700 other people that live here. But right. um, you know, I'm I'm still here, and that's what really matters. So, how was your well, week, some, man? Well, hold on, I want to address this a little bit. Something that I noticed is you no longer have a purple dot on your face. <laughs> What's going on with that? <laughs> I packed the camera. Uh, I'm just using the uh, the camera on the on the on the monitor, so. Uh, it's, uh, okay. it's what it is. Oh, <laughs> hey, something real quick about this hotel room. Yeah. And I understand this is a common thing. When you open the door to the room, you mm. there's like a little hallway. And along one side of the hallway is the closet. And on the other side of the hallway is the door into the bathroom. The mm. problem is the closet doors are mirrors. So for the first couple times I walked into the room, it was <laughs> like I was opening the door and there was a, like the hallway was over here, not straight ahead. Well, just now, just before the show, I had to, you know, you go use the uh, the restroom, and I walked down the hallway, and I was already looking and, and towards this direction because this is where the camp, the uh, the the computer is, this is where the fridge is, this is where the TV is, and you keep going. Okay, there's the bathroom door. Wrong, <laughs> wrong. That's the yeah. closet door with the reflection of the bathroom door on the other side of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I need um, you to do your assignment <laughs> for this evening is to get shit hammered drunk <laughs> go home to your uh, hotel room <laughs> and then report back to us that, that'll, that'll have to wait until uh, until next week at the earliest because and I might be used to it by then because I, I got a PT test on Monday so no heavy drinking oh come uh, on it's yeah, Monday you can, yeah. you can get fucked up tonight nope 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 not, not even trying to risk it no, too, too close to leaving this fucking hellhole of a place. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, right. not, I'm not trying to get in a prison fight right before my parole board. Right. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, well, well put, well put. So, because that would suck, dude. You fail a PT test, you get put on admin hold, you're stuck there like another month. Uh, at least six weeks. Yeah, eat all the dicks. Yeah, yeah, eat every one of them, all of them that you can find, and the ones that you can't find, and any of those that find you, eat those too. Because fuck that, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go, man. It's, it is. It is so time to go. Ah, uh, so uh, so how was your week, man? Man, oh, action packed, dude. So last weekend, woke up early on Saturday, so like uh, ten thirty a.m. something like that so like super fucking early on saturday <laughs> come on man for a saturday especially after podcasting late on a friday night oh, yeah. drink 10 30 is early as shit oh, you, a... you said a.m that's all you had to say yeah, exactly <laughs> so we went and watched captain america civil war mm, mm-hmm. some awesome awesome and we were gonna do a film zone cast lucas and i Mm-hmm. Like we do every time we see a new movie, we're you know yeah let's get home let's do the the cast fresh thoughts uh, yeah we couldn't do that this week because we had to rush out the door uh, right away we had to go to our next event we had to we had to drive an hour and a half to Las Cruces to go watch WWE ah uh, yes I remember that yep it was it was really cool man I. I've probably talked about this on the show before. When I lived in Vegas, every time WWE came to town, we went. Yep. Um, Isaac, easily the biggest wrestling fan in the house, he had never been to one, or at least not in his memory. I think he went to one as a little baby or something like that. Okay. Uh, but he does not remember ever going to a wrestling show. So this was super awesome for him. Me and Lucas had a great time because it's just you know it's always fun to go to a wrestling show but isaac seeing his you know some of his heroes for the first time in person Mm -hmm. was just so much fun to watch and then you know of course doing you know doing the chants and the you know cheering for the good guys and doing the bad guys and stuff and that's just it was just man so much fun i i recommend this to anybody if wrestling comes to town dude just go to the show it is just it is a blast. The tickets are usually cheap if you don't care about being in like the first row or whatever. Mm-hmm. So much fun. So much fun. I, uh, I I can honestly say that I've been to wrestling and I did enjoy myself, even as much as I like to make fun of it not being actually an athletic event and everything else being more of a. a oh, it is an athletic uh, event, but um, but it's, the it's, it's not a it's not a sports contest. It's, sure, it's sure. it's an athletic drama. But anyway, sure. um, I would also recommend. If you're into thrill seeking and just going somewhere and having a good time, and even if you don't think you like it on TV, and especially if you want to get the cheap seats that are on the front row, go to a NASCAR race. Ah, the, yeah. Okay. The cheapest seats are down low because you get you get tires and shit flung on you. Not the whole thing, just little pieces, and it's loud <laughs> as hell. But it is, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is a completely different experience when you're actually there. It is it is not just watching a bunch of cars go in a circle or whatever other criticism you want to have about it. It's all energy and it's horsepower and the community aspect of it. It's I mean it's very similar in my mind to wrestling. I can go to wrestling. I can do it, but watch it on TV. No, nah, no, nah, I'm going to go pick my nose or something. You know, like, right, right. No, I'm with you though. I've I've never been to a NASCAR event, but I did go to the Indy 500 one mm-hmm. year. And I was down there in the um, oh my god! I am such a bad in the Hoosier. in the in the pits. Well, not in well, the. You, I was, you're, you're actually in the infield. Yeah, in yeah, I was in the infield, but they have a they have a name for it, and I can't anyway. Um, at, at the Indian, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, there's a name that they have for the the infield that I can't think of, and I'm a bad Hoosier for it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, like I'm right there with you. I was like. 20, 30 yards from where the cars were just, you know, pew, 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 pew. Mm-hmm. just so loud and so just like, oh, this is so awesome. Yep. Just the, the community aspect, like you were saying, just the, you know, everybody's cheering or just, you know. And, what and it, come on, come on. Who doesn't like going to any of these events and, and spending 10 or 12 bucks for a half warm, mostly flat beer? Come on. <laughs> 
Yeah, fighting the crowds at the at the concession is the only negative thing about any of these events. Hey, that's only a negative if you don't like manipulating people and trying to figure out how to get your get the, through the line as fast as possible. There are ways. There are known. Exactly. Watch hacking the system. Watch what. Watch, Wood and yeah. Captain Murphy's show. On. Yep, yeah, watch uh, Scam School as well. More Brian, Brian, uh, Brian Brushwood stuff. But yeah, it's yeah. there are ways. And if you find entertainment in in, uh, in 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 watching people and manipulating people, and I'm not talking about you know trying to get people to have sex with you. That's what high school's about. Oh, um, yeah, but, <laughs> that's another topic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a different category of social. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, social engineering, sexual predity, it's it's there there there's a Venn diagram somewhere with a lot of lot of there's common def- ground. Yes. <laughs> oh god. Very much overlapping. How, how the fuck did we get there? So um so you so we went and saw Civil War, man. What'd you think? <laughs> uh, I liked it, man. It was uh Civil War was a good movie. It was it's probably my favorite. It's too early to tell. But right now, I feel like it's my favorite of the MCU movies so far. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Act, act uh, lots of drama, not overly produced. Where you know, where you've got an ensemble cast, it's very easy to just have too much shit happening all at the same time. Uh, I never got that feeling. There's so many stars in this movie and so many characters that it would be easy for that to happen, and I, I didn't feel that at all. It felt well paced. Each of the characters had their time, and it was, it was just, it was a thrill ride. It was good, good. Very cool. You, you didn't watch it, right? Because you're waiting to have like an MCU marathon, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's something like that. Um, I have found that uh, my entire family enjoys it a lot more than I do, so I'm gonna wait until uh, until I can at least watch it with them. So you know, get some of that going on, well, and and I want to watch them, you know, in so, in somewhat of a kind of an order. Yeah, well, you're 13 movies behind at this point. <laughs> you, you know, but I'm like I'm like 22 episodes of Daredevil behind, so it's like it, you know, it's 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's Daredevil's whatever. good too. So, um, <laughs> speaking of uh, fantasy worlds, we did not mention Game of Thrones last week, and we did. After, and that was the purpose. <laughs> yeah, a- after some discussion, we decided that was probably a good thing. Um, but I do want to say. That now that the TV show has surpassed the books in almost every storyline, uh, in, yeah, in in the vast majority, sure. Okay. Yes. Um, I would like to say that Game of Thrones is now still in beta. Or should they be back in beta? Because <laughs> we're back to not knowing what the hell is going to go on. Because every time I watch an episode, it, it blows me the hell away. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. All right, yeah, all right. I wanted I wanted to get in this a little bit. Um, so this week, just a couple of days ago, George R. R. Martin released another chapter of Winds of Winter, mm-hmm. book six of A Song of Ice and Fire. Mm-hmm. Just for those that don't realize, that's what Game of Thrones is based on. Right. This is the, I think, sixth chapter to okay. release? Okay. Sixth, seventh, something like that. And... So I was going to be ready this episode. I was going to read the, the chapter and be ready to talk about this chapter. Uh, and the, the way that I've read these chapters in the past is I have the the app, the Song of Ice and Fire app. It's actually called, I think it's uh, A World of Ice and Fire, I mm-hmm. think is the name of the app. Mm-hmm. It's got maps and it's basically like a wiki, Wikipedia of Game of Thrones. Right. Such a cool app. Uh all of the excerpt, or at least I thought, all of the chapter excerpts that Martin has released end up in there. Uh, I got in there, and I because I had heard that the chapter centers on Ariane, which is the she is a Martell. It's Ariane Martell. She is the heir to Dorne. It's Prince Doran's daughter. Okay. And so I go into the app. I went into the excerpts section. And I was like, oh, yeah, Ariane, there it is right there. Cool. Right on. So I read it. And I was like, man, this is so good. Well, it turns out, because I did a little bit of Googling after the fact, it turns out that the chapter that was released just yesterday or the day before was the second 
Aryan chapter. The one that I read was the last chapter that was released a while ago, and I fucking somehow missed it. <laughs> so, so I'm still a chapter behind, but still, I wanted to talk about it. Um, not necessarily specific events that happened in the chapter, because if, if, if you're a reader and you have not read these excerpts yet, I, I highly recommend it, because it's, it's kind of the stopgap. Uh, what what I wanted to talk about was the the diversion between the books and the show, and I know we've talked about it a little bit in the past, but it's mostly been just very peripheral, like the the idea of them splitting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we've talked about the merits of that and you know possible downfalls and whatnot. Um, which which I, I just want to I want to go on record in saying that in a recent interview, the creators what is it the uh, uh, DB uh, Weiss and Benioff and um, uh, yeah, yeah, those guys. Yeah, Benioff and, and Weiss. Um, they they came out and said and confirmed what I had said before. And if, if I can find their interview, I'll link it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. That it's the same story told from different people because histories are passed down orally and things change as they're retold. It's right. they they came out and said exactly what my hypothesis about the split was which last is cool. year. Just which is saying, cool. Just put that on record. This has to be retold like 7,000 years from now. Mm -hmm. Because some of the events that are – now, okay, maybe 7,000 is too much. But it has to be like way in the future when this is retold because there are some major, holy shit, earth-shattering events that are very different in the the books versus the show and and uh, and that's fine but you have to realize that depending on who told the story the importance of those events might be changed as well like i you know i can i can get that uh ramsey in the books was supposedly marrying Arya stark it was actually jane pool right past, right Arya stark whatever but in the show it's sansa stark and in fact the real sansa stark uh, in the book, Sansa is somewhere else. I, okay, all right. Arya versus Sansa. Okay, the Stark girl. It was the Stark girl. I get where it, you know history records that as a different thing. Um, but how about how Doran Martell, the Prince of Dorne, sends his daughter on a mission at his behest. He sends his heir on a mission. Where she is incredible, like so incredibly loyal to her father, and gets this this subterfuge, this plot that he is, uh, uh, you Denied. know, perfect. And she's going to fulfill this mission. That's what's happening in the books. In the TV show, she was like, <laughs> uh, "No, you're a piece of shit," and kills him. Uh, you know that that was just the reason that I'm thinking about that is because first of all the she just killed him in the most recent episode of the show, and this, well, I was gonna say the new chapter, but I guess the second newest chapter uh, released are about as polar opposite, <laughs> about as polar opposite as you could possibly be with not just a character, but the major figureheads of a kingdom again it's a matter of perspective if that part of it doesn't matter to you you're likely to tell it differently and not have the fidelity in the truth if you ever even knew the truth then when you got it i mean i can yeah. go on a whole rant here about the bible but i mean we will leave that out of it um, sure it's 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 a matter of perspective and individual importance yeah, I guess. So I, I guess the way the way it's going to go is according, it, according to George Lucas, the entire Star Wars saga is being relayed uh, uh, cent R2. centuries, yeah, centuries later through R two D two. So right. you know, there's some there's some perspective <laughs> ideas there as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just what I think is okay because Winds of Winter is going to be who the fuck knows how long it's going to take for Martin to publish that book. By the time this book comes out, I feel like I'm going to be two more seasons into Game of Thrones. 
and I'm going to basically have forgotten the plot lines of the books because it is deviating so drastically that I'm going to, I'm, I feel like I'm going to pick up winds of winter and just be like, the fuck? Like, who is this? And how the fuck did he get over there? And why is she, what the fuck? Like, I think it's, it's that far of a deviation that I feel like it's going to hinder my reading experience. Okay. Okay. Well, and, and, but what are you going to do? You're going to go on the internet and talk about it and, and, and make suggestions and have uh, discussions and discourse with other people that have read it and seen it. And what's that going to do? Increase the publicity and the popularity of, of sure. both properties. Sure. So, it's going to be frustrating for me as a fan of both. Um, but I think, but I think you're right. And, and it might actually spawn a podcast perhaps. Oh, which I would love, I would love to do that now. Anyway, it's just there's this thing called time. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna quit my job and podcast full time. Oh, God, I, God, I wish I could so, afford that. So, um, speaking of time, I spent a, <clears throat> a lot of time this week doing a lot of nothing and a lot of time this week very very busy. Most of the time, doing nothing was by directive of the Air Force because I was had to be at a certain place at a certain time doing a certain activity which upon completion left me with ample time to do nothing until the next assigned task. Yeah, hurry up and wait. That's yes. The concept of hurry up and wait. So I filled a lot of that time up this week after after uh, recording uh, the music video podcast with my friend Jason last weekend. We spoke about the Guns N' Roses trilogy, uh, Don't Cry, November Rain, and Estranged. And we, uh, we talked about that for about 40 minutes, and that got some Guns N' Roses stuck in my head. And, of course, recently at Coachella, they reunited. Uh, and uh, in Vegas, just you know, a couple, couple weeks or days before that, they, they played a few shows. And as you know, Kent, Guns N' Roses was one of, if not my most favorite band in high school. And, yeah, uh, I would definitely say it was your favorite. At least that's, that was your purported favorite for sure. Yeah, Um it uh, so so I went I went down the Guns N' Roses rabbit hole, and listened to like a lot of the old albums. I mean things that I hadn't listened to in a long time, and, like the used fusions and Appetite. Yes, yes. I watched. A, I, I I acquired online a few uh, viewings of some live shows and watched those, mm-hmm. and watched a BBC documentary from earlier this year, just prior to them playing at Coachella. So the last thing that was st- stated in the uh, in the documentary was that they had agreed to play at Coachella. Um, so it was, it was that recent, and okay. man, that, it was it was it was a good documentary. It's a good story. I, I don't like how it necessarily jumped around a little bit, but there's a lot of information, and it painted a different picture than what I had remembered and how I had remembered things, and it was very interesting. But either way. Um, I just want to throw a shout out out there to Guns N' Roses because holy shit, man! If you haven't listened to some of their stuff and and realized how different it is from the rest of the music of that time, and how progressive they were as a band, fucking amazing! Damn, I love some Guns N' Roses. So, what do you think about Axl Rose joining? Uh, God damn it, ACDC. Thank you. I just had this like the biggest brain fart. Yeah, of- yeah. I saw it. If you're watching on video right now, just <laughs> it, it, you can. If you if you missed it, just scroll back about 15 seconds and watch Kent's brain literally melt out of his ears. Yeah, and, and good luck with the, the delayed video. I think my video is now about four to five seconds. Four uh, to five n- seconds behind. But let's face it. I mean, with your face, nobody even realized it until you just mentioned it. So <laughs> right. Um, Axel Rose going on tour with ACDC. Uh, you know, if he can pull the songs off, he can pull them off. It's still going to be a good show. He's still got a lot of energy, even though he's like restricted to a throne right now because he busted his leg right before Coachella. Right. But right. Uh, you know, he's all he's all fat and ugly now, and uh, that's cool because that fits in with half the crowd. And uh, it'd probably still be a good show. I'd be interested in watching. I'd, I would go if if, uh, if somebody handed me the tickets. I'd make it a priority to to appear. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm actually looking forward to to hearing slash seeing some some footage of him fronting ACDC. That'd be be interesting to see. Yeah. 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 So, um, let's go ahead and get into this. <laughs>
The last couple of weeks, I have watched TED Talks, but you have not. Mm. And I think you might have made up for it this week. So, so here's, here's the thing, okay? Um, this isn't just a TED section. This is actually, we're going to wrap our feedback into this. Because we got uh, an email from a listener, Kim, who said, Have you heard about the guaranteed annual income, and what do you think about this idea? Mm-hmm. Well... Thank you, Kim, by the way. Yes. And, uh, and Kim, uh, uh, I had never actually heard, well, I'd, I'd heard of ideas like this, but never actually heard this particular idea. Now, Kim, you know me, I'm all for social change. I have, I have very little faith that our, our bureaucracy is going to actually last an, uh, any significant amount of time or that it will in any way, shape, or form benefit the people who, with, for whom it's supposed to be working. Um, and uh, I really think that, uh, that, that the, the direction, the, the disparity of equality in, you know, especially financial equality, fiscal equality in the United States is so pitiful. Um, now, I read about this, and, and I'm sure that you did too. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I watched a couple of TED Talks on this. Uh, first of all is um, Federico Pistono. Basic Income and Other Ways to Fix Capitalism. And the next one would be Rucker Bregman, Why We Should Give Everyone a Basic Income. Now, these are two videos that uh, they, they basically talk about the same thing. And I'm, I'm not even going to try to pretend to be able to dig way deep into the situation. But they're, they're um, well, the Rucker Bregman one is very pro uh, basic income, universal basic income. It's it's basically another concept behind the uh, the guaranteed annual income. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Federico Pistono one was questioning. Well, it was is really driven by the fact that we haven't done major large scale studies on this and how it would affect you know communities of more than a thousand people and things like that. He quoted two of them out of the entire history of man that have been done this way to uh the the covered at least a thousand people and both these videos are really 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 interesting if you don't know anything about it or if you have strong opinions about it go ahead and watch these videos i recommend both of them they're both very well done uh i just man i learned so much just in the last couple days by doing the research on this and finding things about it so i'd really like to hear what your thoughts on it are on it kent and then i'm going to go on a a little tear and go down my notes as far as what i think about it wow oh wow you are like super prepared for this all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mirror a little bit of what you said. Uh, I, I am absolutely with you that the disparity between the rich and the poor, uh, I would say worldwide, but it's, it's very noticeable here in this country. Uh, there's a very, very, very small middle class, and you've got the ultra-elite rich that could literally set fire to half of their money and not even know that it was missing and still be disgustingly filthy rich. And then you've got the other half that is just hoping to God that they can make it to the next payday and keep the electricity on and the water on long enough to get, you know, get through the month so they can make it to the next paycheck. Uh, it, it, and it's ridiculous. Mm hmm absolutely fucking ridiculous um so the the idea of a guaranteed minimum income or what is the uh yeah guaranteed annual income or the guaranteed minimum income there's a a, a few different names for the idea that sounds amazing that sounds absolutely amazing now the the basic idea of how this works is let's, I mean, you could pick a number from the cloud. Let's say the uh, $30,000. Let's say $30,000 is the minimum income. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, per, we could say per household, per person, however you want to postulate it. So if your income for a particular year is $20,000, instead of paying taxes, like, most people are, are taxed on their income. Instead of paying taxes, the government is going to pay you the deficit. So you made $20,000. The guaranteed minimum is thirty. The government is going to pay you the, the difference, the $10,000 that you didn't make. And the same if, if let's say, you made $25,000. Uh, 
they're going to pay you $5,000 to make, make up the difference. Right. And, and in theory to me, that sounds, that sounds fantastic. Everybody needs to live and there should be a minimum standard of living, Mm -hmm. especially in a, in a first world advanced country like the United States. We are the leader of the world, basically. How the hell do we not have a minimum standard for our citizens? This is something that, that, that it's, it's, it's brilliant in concept. However, however, in practice, I, I, have, I have a few problems with it. One, where does the money come from to, to pay that difference? Because especially in, in the state of the, the nation today, when it comes to personal income or family income, it's in such a state that the federal government would be paying probably trillions of dollars every year just to pay for this program. So that alone says it's not doable. Another problem that I have is how would you, how would you legislate this to where it was a no kidding fair standard? So in our example, $30,000 was our, our uh, minimum guaranteed income. If, I, I'm a guy that has a job that's capable of making thirty-five or forty thousand dollars a year based on the job that I have. But I just decide, you know what? God, I just, I just don't want to work anymore. Fuck this. Work's stupid. I, I, I made ten thousand dollars already this year. You know what? Fuck it. The government's gonna pay the other twenty. I'm just quitting. Yeah. Okay. Like, there's no fairness to that. Like, that's ridiculous. There's, there's people that are disabled or people that are unskilled or people that, you know, have other reasons, other, you know, maybe obligations, maybe you're a a single parent of seven children and you just, you can't, but you, you do not have the time or the resources to take care of your family and get a job. You know, there, there's circumstances, but, but the, the guy that just says, fuck work, I don't want to do it. How do you legislate to the point that you're going to stop that guy from just getting twenty thousand free dollars from the from the government. You know, so I don't know. Th- this is a brilliant concept, and if somebody can come up with a way to make this fair across the board and find a way to pay for it, I'm I'm the first one to be on board. Do you have a solution, Amos? Have you figured this out? <laughs> I'm not saying I figured it all out, but I've, I've I, I got an answer to some of your questions. Okay. Okay. What you got, man? So, let me get my notes ready. Now, the guaranteed annual income, I, in by all means, you can do so much more research on this than what me and Kent will ever try to explain away. But the guaranteed annual income basically takes the the poverty level and makes that a guarantee. Fine. That's cool. But it's going to progress people to move beyond that, and why would people be guaranteed a certain amount? So then you come in with what's called the negative income tax, which is the less you make below that, the government subsidizes you up to a certain level to where if you're not working at all, you get, say, 50% of that 30000 So now you're getting 15000 for not working at all. The more you work, the less the government gives you up to that 30%. And at that point, if you're making thirty or the 50, you know, the 30000 at that point, if you're making thirty thousand dollars, you don't pay any tax, you don't get any subsidy. You're just you're making you're earning your way. So you've actually there's an incentive to increase your work level to get to that thirty thousand. Now that thirty thousand is uh, uh, this is the number that a lot of people say because it's supposedly a good number to to operate with. Um, that thirty thousand isn't going to give you a lot of stuff in life. It's going to give you a house. It's going to give you food, clothing, the basic necessities. Fine. You start earning more than that, and as you as you increase your earnings above that thirty thousand, you increase the amount of tax that you pay. Similar to the situ this the, the the situation we have now, but typically what they'll do is on this um, uh, negative income tax is they make it a flat tax, say it's thirty percent or fifty percent even. So for every dollar you make over that thirty thousand, you pay a certain percentage into the system. 
okay, well, we're all paying like 20% in taxes anyway, right? Something like that. So it's not that big of a de- leap to go to 30% and just ha- if it'll cover it, it pays for it. I'm sure that between those two systems with the, the uh, ne- I, personally, I like the negative income tax method myself uh, over the guaranteed annual income. Uh, because it does, I do believe it provides you a, a, a uh, uh, incentive to work and things like that. And there's one very important thing that nobody wants to talk about that I think is really just it's paramount. Not every, not not uh, no system is going to cover everyone perfectly. Sure, yep. you're going to have people that don't want to work, that don't have any drive to work, and that are going to suffer because they can't find a way in whatever system because they are personally them themselves they do not want to put forth an effort fine Mm -hmm. my solution fuck them you can't save everybody the people that don't want to progress don't need to sure sure sure, sure. i'm sorry but not everybody deserves a full and rich living life if they're not willing to put forth any effort to get there. Now, I have another plan for you. We have a lot of jobs in America, in in the world really, that are unskilled, they don't pay very well, and they don't uh, give you any real job experience other than showing up on time and going home after a certain certain number of hours. Mm -hmm. Okay? Trash sorting. You know, driving a bulldozer at the dump. Okay, that's the, the, those are those are shitty jobs. Yes, I get it. How about making license plates? Mm-hmm. How you a lot of that to prisoners, in fact. Right. Well, that's another thing. So my this is my 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 manifesto here. Prisoners, prisons should not be run by corporations. They should be run by the government. Period. Dot. End of story. It's a judicial thing. It should all be handled within the criminal justice system. We should not be paying for school for these for for people that are in prison. I'm not saying give them all these you know make their life worse or anything else, but they should be made to work public service. Building roads, digging ditches, working at the dump, all these other jobs that the, nobody wants to do that don't pay very well. That they're hiring, you know, uh, uh, illegal workers for and everything else. We have the workforce form. They're already there. Yeah, call it indentured servitude if you want. I don't give a shit. We shouldn't. The the American people shouldn't be made to pay for people in prison, and people in prison shouldn't be given benefits that the people on the outside of prison aren't allowed. Mm-hmm. Like the free education, the damn cable or hot meals. Even I don't care. They can work for that stuff too. Build their own fires. Chop down their own their own and. and and again, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Why? Because the same jobs that you would have prisoners doing, you can have non-prisoners doing as community service, things that benefit society. And if they can't find a job, they can go to community service area, work towards the community, and not get paid for it, but still have earned their minimum income, their their uh, negative income tax. They still show work history. They're still putting forth something, which I think if you are going to Feel that you are entitled by become by by membership in a society, be entitled to the benefits of that society. Then you are also required to put forth towards that society. Now that wraps up all three of those in one thing. You've got uh, uh, unskilled or low skilled jobs that are taken care of that anybody can do. You have um, nobody is left without because under that that system, that thirty thousand dollars, everybody gets fifteen thousand dollars. That's at least something. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you get a couple people together, now you can you can afford quite a bit. And you lower that thirty thousand dollar minimum. You lower that down by by uh, decreasing taxes to zero on necessities, things that people, the basics that people need. And also, you let that amount, that minimum uh, minimum required income, the minimum level, that poverty level, you adjust that by area according to the cost of living in that area. Sure. Now, it should people, not be the same in Los Angeles or New York as it is in, say, Alamogordo, New Mexico. Right. Right. Or we, Oxford, Indiana. Right. Exactly. And we've already done most of this work. The government puts out a thing called BAH for all military members. 
It's based on the cost of living in a certain area according to the median rent for that area and is given to military members to supplement their income because they are already paid below the poverty level. So they're paid the BAH to bring them up to a level where they can live in a certain area. That BAH level will change depending on zip code or area code or however you want to put it. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how it's divided up. I'm sure there's certain areas and everything else. But it's paid according to the median level of income for that area and the standard of living that the military should have, which none of us in the military think is high enough. All those right. that are against the military think is too high. So you found, you know, sure. but the research has already been done on stating what the minimum levels for those areas should be. So that part of it's already done. And then by minimum and the taxing on zero on the necessities, we already do this. Most states already have a thing where if you go and buy a gallon of cheap milk, you're not going to pay taxes on it. You, it says two thirty nine on the thing. You pull it out. You take it to the cash register. You pay two thirty nine. It's the same stuff that we can use WIC for, that we can use food stamps for. The government has already classified these basic necessities and how much of that basic necessity you should have. So you take those basic necessities, those things that the government has already decided that this is the minimum that a family would need, you tax those at zero, and then you start taxing things according to how extravagant they are. If you want to buy the can of generic... Uh, uh, a can of generic vegetables, you don't pay tax on that. You want to go with Green Giant, maybe you're going to pay a 2% tax. Why? It's a little bit better quality, sure. It's got some name brand recognition, sure. It's a little bit of a luxury. You're going to pay a little bit of a tax on it. You go and buy a, a Ford Fiesta, there shouldn't be a whole lot of tax on that. Yeah, it's a car, so you're going to pay some taxes because it is more of a luxury than walking or taking public transportation. But then you go and buy a, a Chrysler 300, now you're talking more of a, of a luxury vehicle. So you're going to pay more of a tax on it. You want to go buy an Xbox? Pay 50% tax on your Xbox. Why? Because it's something you absolutely don't need in any way, shape, or form. It's a complete luxury. And if you can afford to buy the fucking Xbox, if you've saved up enough for that, then you can save up a little bit more and pay the taxes on it. And all those taxes, those, those luxury taxes, that scalable tax system, goes into helping pay for the system where everybody has a minimum standard of living. Dude, I yeah, this is I've never never thought of it in that way, and I think that model is it's very attractive. I would love to see actual numbers on this. If if anyone has has actually crunched numbers based on ideas like this, have have you come across anything like that? I've I've done some because I've I've been festering on this idea idea for years actually, um, and I've come up with some studies, but none of them that really match exactly my intent behind it, and. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't really, I mean, it's not like I've gone into, you know, MIT's laboratories and, and tried to find, you know, their archives and shit like that and looked into sure. it. But it's, this is something that I've been just been going with because I think it's the fairest way to do things. You tax the things that, you, you put the highest tax on the things that you need the least. You don't tax things that people absolutely should have. Um and of course, you're going to have you know that that that'll be a federal tax to go into that fund, and you're going to ha you're going to have state taxes and things like that that are going to vary according to state. And you know, some places are going to have a higher standard of living than others. That's that's life. But everything everything comes out in the wash. It all works it works its way out eventually. Yeah. No, I I I, I like that a lot because it, one of the things that this covers is, as you said, luxury tax. So if you're paying like a you know 20% on your Xbox or whatever if you can afford to buy a yacht let's let's say like a a $400,000 yacht or a you know 2 million dollar mansion or something like that you can afford to to pay like another you know 30 or 40% tax on that mm -hmm. uh which i mean by today's standard just seems ridiculously unfair. Well, I saved up. I'm sorry. You're not scraping your pennies together to buy a yacht. Mm -hmm. You are filthy goddamn rich. Well, well by here's, standard, in most of American standards, you're filthy fucking rich and don't know what else to spend your money on. So you buy a yacht. You know, you can spend the extra money on the tax that's going to help out. So. The rest Another thing that – one of the things that people – because I've mentioned this to a few people over the years, and one of the things that they mention is, well, now you're, you're unfairly taxing 
the wealthy by charging what they buy. No, you're in, you're 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 taxing purchases. I wouldn't, me personally, you know, Anthony campaign 2016. Yeah. I would not have a scalable system for income tax. If mm-hmm. I'm going to tax income, which I I really don't want to in the first place, if I'm going to tax income, I'm going to tax it at a flat rate across the board. Everyone pays the same. It doesn't get higher for the rich people. Everyone pays the same percentage. And your your government budget is based on the income it receives, not on projections. Right, right. So right. so which whatever the the government pulled in last year minus the funding of the of the uh, you know the the negative income tax, that is what the government has left to spend this year. And they better spend it wisely. Right. You know, but I mean, and I know there are probably tons of loopholes that I'm not thinking about and everything else, but it's sure. conversations like this, these radical thoughts that we have to have because otherwise, A, the rich aren't going to let it happen because they're the rich. Right. The the rich are in charge. They're right. the ones making the decisions. Right. Of course, they're not going to fuck themselves over, so they're going to come up with excuses or mm-hmm. reasons, I guess, to – you know, why this won't work, but the conversation needs to be had and it needs to be had with more than just rich congressman number one versus rich congressman number so, two. Something I didn't know, um, this, uh, a program like this was very close to being enacted in, um, in uh, uh, 80, no, it was before that, I don't know, it was when Nixon was in office because he actually had, had a program gone through Congress and had gotten to the Senate floor and then it had gotten kicked off the Senate floor because they wanted to make more changes and make it even better. But then it never came back out again, of course. And then, and then Nixon unceremoniously left office rather quickly. Oh, um, right. So it, it's not that it hasn't been an option. It's just that it's never been taken the full length. It's never been taken all the way. And I'm all for radical change, especially when it comes to... Um, I mean, I don't know if you did. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think you ever did, but... Uh, my mom and I and my stepdad and, you know, over the years, different members of the family, stuff like that, we've lived on welfare. You know, we, we did the welfare things. We did the, 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 the WIC, um, and yeah. the food stamps and definitely then WIC, um, you know, all that stuff. We, we, yeah. we did that whole thing. And that was, as I was growing up. And then of course the WIC was when, uh, I was married to my first wife and we were really young and didn't have really anything established. And it does help out, but I've seen so many times it's been abused. It's if you just make it to where if you're going to abuse it, you suffer. And well, sorry, but if you, you know, if you, if you, I mean, you, you can't correct people that are going to fuck things up anyway. Right, right. So, well, I, I think, you know, I, a system like what you were talking about sounds, sounds fantastic. Just like the, you know, the, the very idea of this sounds fantastic. Uh, the, the, the real trick in this, well, to, twofold the first of all convincing the rich people the ones that are making the decision convincing them to go ahead with something like this but the the real challenge i think is to legislate it properly Mm. so that because like you said there there's people that are going to abuse these programs well first off yes i mean that's going to happen no matter what you can't prevent it completely across the board however we should strive to make it as fair as possible and as enforceable, I guess, as possible. And w- where fairness comes in, where let's say a, 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 a single person living by themselves should absolutely have to work for the full amount of the government subsidy, whatever, right? But the someone who's in a circumstance... Uh, you know, like, like for my earlier example, a single parent that has seven children, you know, for however that happened or whatever. I mean, you can't, I mean, how, how do you balance that? Uh, you know, then you've got the, you know, the, the worker that was, that was injured on the job or maybe even off the job. See, you, you have to understand the current system, the current system actually benefits the people who abuse it by having extra kids and things like that. Absolutely. And, and I know that's not the, the politically correct thing to say, but I've seen it over and over again. The more kids you have, the more subsidy you receive. And 
it's it didn't benefit the kids. It's only benefiting the parents. Right. No, no, no. I understand absolutely what you're saying, but at the same time, so what, what do you do where a, a situation where you have, let's say, a single mom mm-hmm. that has seven kids, cannot work and and take care of the family at the same time, and if you work, you, there's no way you're going to pay for childcare for seven children on, you know, a, a, anything other than the most amazing job you've ever heard of. Uh, I mean, how, how do you? I get what you're saying that that people are rewarded for having more kids, but but how, how do you like you can't punish someone? You can't punish a family because the family is too large. No, again, the people that if you if you if I provide you with if I give you five bucks a day, if you're a homeless dude and I I, I walk by every day and I give you five dollars, uh-huh. you can use that food to or that money to buy food. Or you can use it for your own devices. Right. My okay. my my some, beer, my drugs or whatever. Right. Some guys are gonna some some people are gonna go and buy the drugs and buy the beer or whatever. Some people are gonna go and buy the food at McDonald's. Some people are gonna go and take that shit down to the to the Albertsons and buy the value meals and actually save up a little money because now for five bucks a day I can buy three cans of beans and a hot dog. Yep, absolutely. You know? Yes, yep, and yep, can, yep. And, and still maintain the standard that I had of, of how I was living, this just enhances that, and I still get to save up. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to reward drive, and you have to understand that the zero drive, the people that are going to abuse the system, the, 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 the ladies that, that don't ever bother getting married but sure as hell aren't using birth control either, which should be free, by the uh, way. No, no, sure, sure. You know, and, and to a certain degree, I, I agree with everything you're saying about the, uh, you know, uh, women having kids and not caring or whatever. But at the same time, I, I cannot fathom the idea of someone saying, you know what? Uncle Sam's going to give me 300 more dollars. Let's have another kid. Like, I, I, I don't think anybody is on purpose making more babies for the it takes more money to raise a baby than what like your your eighth child is going to cost more money than what the eighth the, than what the government is going to give you for the eighth child they're going to give you $300 more a month you're actually going to qualify for better benefits the kids are going to more a month listen to what i'm saying okay the government is going to pay you say they t- give you 300 bucks more a month fine okay but you know what you're going to qualify for you're going to qualify for for more other things, all those kids, if you're qualifying for an extra three hundred dollars a month for for having this kid, all those kids are going to get free food at, at in school. So you're not going to have to feed them two meals a day at school because they're going to be able to get breakfast and lunch for free. They're going to come home as soon as they hit sixteen. You're going to have them working, and they're going to be bringing that money home, or you're going to have them on the street making money other ways. Okay, how prevalent is this though? Like, like when I, when I grew up. When I grew up, this was fifty percent of my neighborhoods. It was okay. it wasn't even like a secret. It was openly talked about. I had kids in my high school in California that were openly having the conversation, my mom's gonna have another kid because we need to get a better place. Okay. Like I am not speaking completely out of turn. Yeah, that wasn't my family. My mom only ever had one kid. Not and, and I'm not saying it wasn't by choice because you know, I kind of ripped shit up on my way out. So, you know, there's only op- the opportunity to have one kid. But, you know, I was never in the situation where another kid would add welfare. And but I knew so many people growing up. That was like a standard. Like when it was a, a com- an open conversation where, oh, so and so's pregnant. Oh, all right. You know, that's that's great. Why? Because they're going to have a kid. No, because they're going to get more welfare stamps or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Like it, it was an, you you grew up in, in suburbia, Indiana, out in the boondocks where you know you didn't have that particular issue growing up. You know, you didn't get cable until you were 45, but you know, you didn't have the the For the record, I'm still not 45. Oh, but oh, and, good. And no, and please. do you, and do you have cable? <laughs> I do not. And, uh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, well, yes, it, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it's it's so prevalent that like it, I'm not saying it's like 
ninety percent of the country is doing it. Sure, sure, but, sure, sure. But, but it's enough. It's enough that's going to put yes. a strain on government funds. Yes. So stop rewarding the people that are trying to screw the system. Give everyone an equal slate and let them survive within that. How do you legislate that? Because once you've got seven kids, you and you're a single parent, you like there's no feasible way to contribute. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. how do you how do you fix that? It's called phasing in. Okay. Okay. So like So you have you have the new program you're going to and you have the program you're escaping from. Okay. And you slowly take one away while you start bringing in the other one. Got it. All right. So, you, so you still want grandfather the the already existing right uh, uh, takers, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I guess that makes sense because if you if you going into this new system, if this is what you're raised in, you kind of you you get into it knowing the rules and. If you decide to take advantage of it, well, fuck you. That's your own fault. And, because and you knew keep in mind, I, I've known people that had that owned cars that would have their mom claim it, you know, put it in their mom's name or whatever else, so that they didn't have to claim it when they went in to do their welfare checks or whatever else, their little annual sure. reviews. Yep, yep, yep. Well, yep, yep. Stop, 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 stop that shit completely. You don't, you don't put it as in, well, if you have this much wealth, you don't get this. It's very simple. Everyone gets this minimum standard. If you make more money than that, then it's you know then it balances itself out. Right, and then like you said, ta you know, tax the purchases. Yes. So if it's a super expensive luxury purchase, like the yacht or whatever, mm -hmm. well, fuck. If you can afford a goddamn yacht, you can afford to pay the taxes. On right, it. and but and you don't tax property. You tax real estate. And you tax things that require um, social services. Cars require roads. So you tax the cars in compensation for the roads. You tax real estate because it's property that you, that the, that you could be using for anything else, but you're holding it for yourself. So if there's, there's land rights, you're going to build on it, whatever else. There's so many other different things that you can do with it that real estate is eventually, you know, no matter how you flesh it out, real estate has to get taxed. Mm-hmm. And you close the fucking loopholes. Cool. Well, okay. And th this is a topic that we could we could follow this rabbit hole down so many paths. I I, I think you know I, I'm just gonna reiterate. I think the idea of of a guaranteed annual income is absolutely brilliant. And Amos, I think you have come up with a a at least a a structure for a great system where this could actually work. I would love to see government officials and social uh, social advocacy groups uh, kind of get together and discuss these things in a, in a very uh, rational and intelligent manner, data-driven kind of way. I would, I would love to see something like this come come uh to pass at least even uh a, like a partial implement implementation would be something mm -hmm. um i think it's fantastic i uh, bottom I, the bottom line is massive social change and massive income inequality there has to be a major change there ha it has to happen because otherwise the rich are just going to run everybody to the ground we're all going to be poor and 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 not even poor but like like, yeah, you know what? I, I think, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I want to do this as a topic, uh, as a main topic in itself on a, on a future show. Cause I've got probably hours worth of thoughts about, uh, the, you know, the, the disparity between the rich and the poor and why that is and why it can't change under the current system. I've got, like I said, probably hours of thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so let's let's do that for a future show. I don't know if it'll be next week, but uh, definitely on a future show, let's explore that because I've got, I've got a lot of thoughts on that and and even some possible solutions for it. So um, so I've been talking about how if, if under my system, if you were to go and buy stuff that you don't need, that it would get taxed, and the more that you didn't need it, the more of a luxury it was, the more it got taxed. But how's this? How about today? I give you an opportunity to save some money on some shit you don't need, but you know you want it. 
<laughs> without the extreme luxury tax. That would be yeah, amazing. It, this is a negative tax. I'll give you 10% off. Go to geekandgamergear.com. G-E-E-K-N-G-A-M-E-R-G-E-A-R.com. Cruise on over there. Put Ritual Misery as your code at checkout. You get 10% off your entire first order. 10% off. That's like that's negative tax. See, we're, we're doing negative luxury tax here. So cruise on it over. It all to, starts here. Social yes. change starts here, yes. people. Yes, start your own social change, geekandgamergear.com. Ritual Misery as the code, all one word at checkout. 10% off your first order. And, uh, it, you know, it... It just it'll help us out a little bit. It helps you out. Everybody makes deal. It, this is like a, a special kind of socialism, which shouldn't be a bad word, but still is. So cruise on over to geekandgamergear.com. They got all kinds of great cool shit over there. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. I was just there earlier today. There's there's a cool th- there's uh, super NES controllers that are USB that you can mm-hmm. use for your PC games. Super your emulators. Super, yeah, like super awesome, man. Yep. Uh, and it's super cheap. It's less than ten bucks, I think, for that. Yeah, thing. it's awesome. So yeah, yeah, cruise on over there, save ten percent, awesome. and uh, and let us know. Uh, let us know what you get over there. Tweet it to us. Let us know at Ritual yeah. Misery. So, at Ritual Misery on Twitter. All right, now uh, we got some Diamond Club news going on today. And Kent, I think you uh, you want to take this. Um. Yeah. So. It it, it, it came a, to my knowledge. That's that's that, a good uh, start. Yeah, I'm just trying to think how how to actually address this. There's um, so a chat roamer in Alberta, Canada, uh, was talking about the wildfires that's going on, and there's massive evacuations and people are losing their homes. Uh, one of the big problems that she was talking about uh, were displaced pets. Mm. You know, when you're evacuated and you get put in these like little shelters, like you know, high school gyms and things like that, you know, they've got a cot for you, but they don't have a place for your dog. Mm. Uh, you know, so there's there's this secondary disaster or or problem that goes along with that, where you know, I've, I've got this dog. I'm not gonna just I'm not just gonna let my dog go. Like, are you kidding me? This is my family member. Right. Um, so there's this this additional burden of you know how are we going to take care of the pets, uh, kenneling, uh, you know the food the I mean if you get a bunch of dogs in a place and they're nervous you know they're going to chew you need you need toys for them to chew on things like that, yep. uh, but pets w- was the topic of conversation in chat uh, when we were talking about it earlier but uh, this is like such a big issue the evacuation that they need they need food they need shelter they need blankets probably clothes baby items um, all sorts of things Um, but it's something that i've found when it comes to charitable contributions instead of donating the items that are needed find an organization where you can actually give them money because these are people that know what the needs are and know how best to spend the money uh, wh- and one let's of, let's face it; it costs less to ship money than it does to ship things. Exactly, you can you can transfer money for free in most you know by most banks. You can yep. transfer. So so how can people transfer some money to people that need this stuff right now? Right. So right now, the best organization that I know of that 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 can accept payment uh, to help out these people is the Canadian Red Cross, and it's a super long, ridiculous URL. So I went to the Diamond Club URL shortener. If you go to yolo420.com slash fire donate, it will bring up the Canadian Red Cross specifically for the Alberta fires. And whatever you donate there will go to help out those affected by the fires. That's uh, yolo420, yolo 420com slash fire donate, all one word. Yeah, be much appreciated. If you want to feel good about yourself, go ahead and do that. Cool. And uh, so while we're talking about things that you found on the internet, um, some what is this? Uh, Google Play Music. Google. I can't even say Google anymore. Like the second G just does not want to happen in the back of my throat. It's like Google, Google Play Music. So we've been we've been listed on on iTunes for 
holy crap, man, going on like two years or something. Like that's pretty easy to get into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Stitcher and like all these other pod finder, cast finders. What are mm-hmm. they called? Mm-hmm. Uh, po- uh, pod catchers. Pod catchers. There it is. <laughs> you know, however, however it is that you find this show, you know, we've been listed on there. But um, so all, all of you out there that have Android phones and you don't know how to get podcasts and you kind of you got to find these third party apps that suck ass for, you know, because you don't have iTunes. I mean, I, I'm not trying to hype up iTunes necessarily, but but when it comes to finding a podcast, iTunes is the place to find a podcast. Mm-hmm. Every podcast is on iTunes. Um, however, for, you know, for our, our, our friends that are Android users, it's kind of bullshit that they haven't had a way. Well, now they have a way. Google Play, Google Play Music, which is basically the iTunes equivalent, now features podcasts. Mm-hmm. And Ritual Misery is listed there, but only the mainstream, only the main audio ritual misery stream is listed there none of the other shows or the video stream uh which which we will look into that's a tech issue and we will fix that uh, uh, but that's, that's that's an effort issue right right because no, exactly. because i just didn't put all the rest of them in there uh it's an effort issue with a tech solution we'll <laughs> like that. or maybe it's a, a tech issue with an effort solution uh, that's probably more accurate yeah probably <laughs> no but so I was talking to Steph earlier because she has an Android phone. She's got a Samsung, and I was telling her that like, hey, we're on, uh, we're on uh, Google Play now, so go check it out. Because she was using some some third party podcatcher before, mm-hmm. and well, anyway, so I, I got curious because I was doing the show notes and I, was, I wanted to put something in here about how we're on Google Play, and I Googled. I was in a Chrome browser, the Google Chrome browser, and I Google searched Google Play Podcast. So I clicked on what came up, and now apparently, because I clicked this link, I am now, I now have an account for publishing podcasts on Google Play. And apparently this is a this is a podcasting portal that I have yet to explore. I'm gonna get in there here in a little while and explore that to see what well you can do with it. We're, but I clicked a Google search result and I now have an account for publishing podcasts. Now I have I have to ask the question. Were you logged into the Ritual Misery account when you did it? No. I was logged into my personal account. Okay. Well shit. There you go. Start pushing your podcast out. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So uh, that's awesome. That's, I thought that was kind of funny how that worked out. But, if, but yeah, if you're on an Android where you you are on a Google OS of any sort, um, yeah, you can you can check it out directly now. Very cool. Hey, um, so next week, man, uh, what do we got planned for next week? I'm, I I don't know if I'm going to even be available next week. Because I will be on the road. I will be mid-move. Right. So if you're not available, but mm-hmm. I'm available, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there's some choices there. I could either do a solo podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, which that gauntlet has been thrown and, 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 and uh, still waiting for that, by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, both of us have done some, some kilo episodes some solo things mm-hmm. uh, I just did one uh, last weekend in fact mm-hmm. um, I think but you have done one full episode solo which I have not yet done uh, that that is actually a goal of mine to do a solo not just a solo episode but an eventual goal of mine is to do a one mic show um, so that'd be an interesting experience experiment well experience and experiment um, but it would also be cool to bring in guest hosts, which I've got one or two names in mind that mm-hmm. I think would be willing and able to do so. Um, Very cool. Yeah. I, what, what, what do you think I should do? Um, honestly, it's it's for for me. It's really a uh, 
it's, it's a bit of a kerfuffle. As much as I love doing this podcast and as much as I, I love being you know here and talking with you and, and covering topics that I never get a chance to talk about any other time, thank you, Kim, um, for that wonderful email at uh, podcast at com. Um, actually, she went straight to the website, com. went down to the contact link and threw that in there that way. So yep. um, I... I next weekend is a soccer tournament for my twins and it'll be their last soccer tournament in Texas. So um it really doesn't even matter to me what you do next week. You, you just experiment with it all you want. Um yeah. So next week next week I'm gonna be I'll be home with uh with the soccer tournament, doing that with the kids in Texas. The week after that will be Memorial Day weekend, and I'll probably be packing and rearranging things, and getting things ready that weekend. So I should be good then. And then the two Fridays after that, I will actually be on the road. Literally this time. Literally, not- like not. I won't be like mid move. I will literally be driving from Texas to my destination, which I'm still. I don't know if I have yet or not, but I'm still not ready to completely come out with that. Um, yeah. If you dig through our archives, there's some there's some clues and you can probably piece it together. But yeah, there's some slip ups. Um, but yeah, in, in, until uh, until twenty two June, twenty two June, I'll be free to talk about it all I want, and that's uh, that's of course for legal reasons that we can get into in another episode because that's a whole topic in and of itself. Um, but uh, but yeah, so there's that, and uh, be looking forward to that. I am going to from the time. From the time right after right after Granberry, right after the Granberry tournament, I'm going to start documenting in in a uh, blog format all the stuff that we're doing for the move. I'm going to blog the entire move. It'll be on RitualMissouri.com. Right on. And uh, I'm going to make that happen. Might have some pictures. Might have some videos. I might even be able to get uh, my beautiful wife to accompany me on some of the videos. We'll see. And uh, I can't guarantee it'll be updated every day because there are going to be days when I won't have internet access during this, this massive drive across the, the country. But yeah. that's definitely going to happen. So keep, keep, uh, keep an eye on RitualMisery.com for, for that. Right on, man. Um, yeah, so that I look so much forward to following you on that adventure. I, I imagine that you're going to tweet some of that as well or at least links um, to yeah, I, sh- I should be. I'll tweet as often as I can, but again, with with minimal cell phone coverage for parts of it, I don't know how often that'll happen. But expect a lot of pictures and uh, a lot of fun. Beautiful. And and uh, people want to follow you on Twitter. Where would they find that? At Ethan Kane. At Ethan Kane. I'll be right there. I'll and and if nothing else, every time that I post a blog entry or post multiples, if I have, end up having to save up for some, um, I'll tweet out that it's live and that you can go where, over there and read it. Yeah, check out Periscope too. See if you can do some of that. Um, Ooh, yeah. yeah. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, with nobody uh, wants to follow you. Ah, uh, uh, a few people do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's gonna what's gonna happen on my Twitter. You, what, you, you know, you, what if we got live tweeting at WWE? You should, the, you should blog during the same time that I'm moving. Blog all the stuff that you're doing to make your house more of a home that you're already in and not moving. <laughs> Ooh, that's yeah, it should be like, a a a, uh, a thirty day challenge to improve something about your house and blog it every day. Oh my god, yeah, kind of have like a, a like a dueling Twitter kind of thing. Ooh, ooh, ideas are forming. Ooh, if you have ideas, if you the audience have ideas about how we can duel each other on Twitter, you can get either go to richmisery dot com and go to the contact link like Kim did last week. Or you can go to ritualmisery.reddit.com and give us some ideas there. Or you can go to Ethan Kane at Ethan Kane on Twitter to contact Amos. Or you can contact me at RM underscore Del Noche or the show at Ritual Misery. Any of those ways would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. How else can they get a hold of us, Amos? Uh, well, they can always email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. They can call and leave us a voicemail at 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Um, of course, you can find all these links and everything else, uh, more ways to support the show, and give us feedback on our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much for, to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music on our podcast, and thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya.
Hit the button. Uh, Diamond Club hopes you enjoyed this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot to bring that one up. <laughs> Shit, dip.